uh, there was, I wasn't a good child. Um, I failed seventh grade. I went to summer school. I failed summer school. I went back to seventh grade. I failed seventh grade. Then I went back to summer school. And I failed summer school. And my dad used to say I was going to be the only grandmother in seventh grade. Well, the school just said, you know, let's just pass her through. She had to get something out of all that. And they did. They passed me, uh, they passed me to the eighth grade, and I was an A student in the eighth grade. Uh, when I was in ninth grade, I went to maybe two months of ninth grade. And there were uh, myself and three other girls that hang out all the time. And uh, we decided to flick school. And, and that meant play hooky or whatever your generation, skip school. We called it flick school. So we did that. We flicked a couple days of school. And we would go to a, a friend Sue's house. And uh, her parents worked during the day. And so we'd hang out there all day. So the one day we were flicking school and all we had was our books and our uh, clothing and the things, you know, our lunch money, 50 cents each. And uh, the phone rang at Sue's house in the middle of the day. And so that really alarmed us. We thought, oh, it's the school. Uh, they know that the Johnsons work and so they're just... Uh, calling and you know Sue didn't know whether she should answer it or not answer it or why someone would be calling there during the day anyway uh, we got panicked now this is in uh, like September the first month in ninth grade and uh, I the day I got pregnant was August 31st I know exactly what day I got pregnant for my son and uh, so I did not know I was pregnant. But anyway, we all got panicked and decided, well, what we'll do is we'll run away and uh, we'll just throw our books and we'll run away and we'll stay gone one night and they'll be so worried about us that they'll, for, you know, they won't, you know, they'll be so glad to see us that <laughs> they'll forget about us. Flick and school. You know, the reasoning of a 15 year old. And I was probably three down. There was two older than me, than me, and one younger than me. So in ages back then counted, you know. I mean, six months counted in age. So um, <laughs> we went out and we had uh, jump trains and walked and got quite a ways away from where we lived and uh, decided we got to a highway and decided we were going to hitchhike. And so we stuck out our thumbs and we hitchhiked and the uh, two cars pulled over and in each car were two young guys and they were on their way to Flint, Michigan and they had gone down to Baltimore or someplace like that to pick up a car and uh, so they were driving back with this extra car. So there was two in each car. And they asked us where we were going. And we told them, Flint, Michigan. What a coincidence, you know. So before we got in the car with the guys, we decided and made a pact that we would never tell their names. And that, you know, no matter what, we, we wouldn't squeal on them. And the girls decided in the girls' bathroom in one of the gas stations that as soon as we got to Flint, Michigan, we were dumping these guys. That there was going to be no girlfriend, boyfriend, pairing up stuff. Because I had a boyfriend, <laughs> you know. But, you know, unlike today, you couldn't just pick up a cell phone and call him. You, you know, there was no way I could reach my boyfriend or, or anyone, you know. There was just no way I could call him, you know. Um, so... As soon as we got to Flint, Michigan, we stopped at this bowling alley 
It was right by, actually, it was a drive-in restaurant with curb service. And uh, we had stopped there. And uh, the girls and all of us in the bathroom again. And the girls had decided that they wanted to go live in an apartment with these guys. <laughs> and which one was mine? And uh, and he was a very nice looking guy. But again, I had a boyfriend. <laughs> you know, I was kind of a really loyal. And uh, I wasn't a whore, you know. I mean, I just wasn't going to. And I fought with them about it. And so they left me there. Just got in the car loads and left. And there I stood in this restaurant, uh, bowling alley, curb service type restaurant. And by myself, with 50 cents in my pocket and my school clothes. <laughs> I can tell you exactly what I wore that day, you know. And I was kind of bummed out because now I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know where I'm at. I'm, I'm by myself. I'm watching them pull away and leave me. So as I was sitting in a booth inside, uh, I was noticing this young girl who was going around from car to car to car. And what she was doing was panhandling. She would go to a car and say, you know, do you got a dime, you got a quarter, and then to the next car, next car. And then she would come inside and, and sit. And I got to talking with her and found out that she was a runaway too. And her name was Sherry. And she was a year or two older than me. And we really hit it off. And she says, I have my own place. She said, I have a mean stepfather and I run away and I'm not going back there. I don't know if he molested her or whatnot. She didn't share any of that with me. But she wasn't going back. And he was hunting for her. She had seen him around and she would dodge him. And... Uh, but she had an apartment, and she told me, come stay with me, and I'll teach you how to do this, and uh, you'll succeed at it. And uh, so I did. I, uh, she took me to her house. We stole clothes for her to wear. That's how we got our clothing. And every night we'd go out and panhandle. And we, sometimes we'd make $100 a piece. Now, I'm talking 1966. That was a lot of money to make it at night, $100, and didn't have to pull her pants down or do prostitution or anything. And I did no drugs, and I didn't drink alcohol. But uh, about two weeks after this, the three girls that I had run away from had seen on TV where a young girl had been found dead, and they were sure it was me. And so they got drunk. They got hysterical, they cried, the neighbors in their apartment building uh, called the police. The police came and they all had warrants for their arrest because their parents had signed warrants for their arrest. The only one that did not have a warrant was me. And that was because my parents didn't, didn't want to place a warrant against me. And the policeman even told them, you know, if we run into all four of them, we can't pick your daughter up. Hi, Shai, this is my kitty. We can't pick your daughter up. We have to let her go. So the school ended up signing a warrant, a truancy warrant, so that they could retain me. But they were hysterical thinking I was dead, and I, I wasn't dead. And so the story is going to be continued. Uh, and I'll tell you how I survived... Uh, months in Flint, Michigan uh, with just a little help from a friend. See you soon.